Smith got the tie off up in the back of the ADA. Good morning. We do honor and praise God for our being here. We want to thank each and every one in the house today and those online. At this time, we're going to go and get open up. We're going to ask uh, someone to give us a song and then we'll have prayer and go right into the lesson for today. Mother Bond, will you give us a song? Oh, okay. I thought you said somebody is. Okay. Yeah, anyone that's true. <laughs> for today is from the book of Luke, Luke the 15th chapter, the 11th through 24th verse. And the subject is the part of the son. Uh, now, lesson talks about a young man who decided to leave the comfortable home and see the world, uh, only to be disappointed. As we begin reading our uh, in our lesson at chapter at verse 11, it says, Jesus began his story with a certain man had two sons. And the younger son told his father, said, you know, I want my share of what's coming to me now. The father divided the wealth between them. And it was a, just a few days later, the younger son packed all his belongings and traveled to a distant land. And there he wasted all his money on parties and loose women. 
About this time, his money was gone, and a great famine came over the land. So he began to be very hungry. He was without. He didn't have any friends. All the friends that he had set up and done, done things for, they had let him down. They were trying to take care of their own business with the family and everything. And he, he went off and he persuaded a farmer to hire him to feed the pigs. And, and, and he became so hungry that he wanted to eat what he was feeding the pigs. Amen. He had really hit love. Mm -hmm. And then he said, that brought him to his senses. So now look, he said to him, he said, now at home, the servants got plenty to eat and some to spare. And here I am out here starving. So that just don't make no sense. He said, I'm going home. I'll go to my father and I'll say, Father, I've sinned against heaven and you. Mm -hmm. I'm going, and, and, uh, he said, and I'm not worthy to be called your son anymore. Just take me on as a hired hand. I, I, I'll be all right. And then he, he got right up and he started home to his father. But while he was still a long way off, the father recognized him. Don't know where it was, the way he walked or whatever. But the father recognized him. He ran out and hugged him mm -hmm. and kissed him. Yeah. And, and he started telling him, um, he started talking to his father and telling him, so you know, I, 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 I this, that father, this, he was so glad to see him. Mm -hmm. He didn't hear nothing that he had to say. He got, and, and he says, um, as he started talking, the father said, Father, I, I, I see him against you. And he said, he called him the servant, said, go head on and get, go out there. Go get him some clean clothes, clean him up and everything. Mm -hmm. And he didn't hear what he was saying. And then he told him, he said, uh, um, and, and while the son was calling the father, he was calling his servant. Mm -hmm. And don't bring everything. Bring your finest robe in the house. And make sure you bring some shoes. Mm -hmm. And get a ring, get that family ring and put on his hand. And then kill the fattest calf. And mm -hmm. we're going to celebrate with the feast. For my son was dead and has returned to life. Mm -hmm. He was lost but found. And they began to celebrate. Mm -hmm. Now, as we look at some of the things, some of the points in the story, first you look at the younger son. The younger son seemed like he was one of those kind of, kind of spoiled a little bit. His father may have doted on him. And he appeared to be kind of maybe a little lazy. But anyway, he wanted to go out and see the world. He was not content to wait for his father's passing to get the blessing that was would have been due to him. Mm -hmm. He wanted to go out and see the world. Mm -hmm. And he said, he told his daddy, he said, you know, I want whatever belongs to me. I want mine now. I want mine now because uh, I'm big. Amen. And, and the father, he ran it to him. Mm -hmm. Knowing that the way he acted at home, he would not be responsible, but the father gave it to him anyway. Yep. Now, according to the Jewish law, it says that the father was not obligated to give unto the younger son the man. That's right. He was to allot uh, a portion of the estate that would take place after his death. Mm -hmm. And it says that, therefore, for the younger son to demand it, to man it while the father was alive, uh, they said it was considered highly disrespectful. And insulted. But nevertheless, the father went along with it. Mm -hmm. He said he traveled to a far country. I guess he was saying, I'm going to get as far away from home as I can. Mm -hmm. So he went there. And uh, he was free of his father's uh, um, gun. He was free of his father's advice. He was free of everything. And he had no restraint. Mm -hmm. He didn't have to worry about getting up a certain time to go in the fields and work. He was, he was free, and he was happy. Besides, he had a lump sum of money. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, uh, and you see, when he got there, he didn't look for, he didn't use his head at all. He didn't look for no place to say, a bank, I'm mm -hmm. going to put this lump sum in there, and I'm going to catch on it. Mm -hmm. You know, our folks have always told us, and, uh, you're working now, you're making a little money, 
So put your little bit down because when you ain't got one, nobody will lend you anything. That's right. And a lot of us have been told that. Mm -hmm. So he didn't do that. He squandered. He bought people. He set people up. He parted. He did everything. He just had himself a ball. Mm -hmm. And then when he realized, he lived like a wealthy man. But his money didn't last him very long. And he just, he didn't realize it was just getting away from him so much. As the money left, so did his friends. That's right. He didn't have anybody. And he told them, he said, you know, as soon, you know, all his money and the friends was gone. And to make matter worse, here come this family. He wasn't prepared for it. He could have survived had he been looking out for himself, mm -hmm. but he was part of it. Mm -hmm. He wanted to see the world. He wanted to conquer the world. He wanted to have a good time, and he did. And he realized he had hit rock bottom. Then he came to his senses. He said, you know, this don't even make no sense. He said, all um, the hard hand at my father's house, fairer better than I am, I'm starving, and they got food to spare. He said, you know, this just ain't working out right, he said. Well, I guess, I guess I'll go back home. He didn't really want to go back in the situation that he was in. He said, I'm going to go back home. He said, and I'm going to tell, and said, I don't, I don't have to live like this. I'm going home. And, and he practiced that little speech that he's going to tell his father. He said, first thing I'm going to tell him is, I'm going to address him as father. And the second thing I'm going to tell him is that, uh, Father, I've sinned against you, and I've sinned against heaven. Mm -hmm. and, uh, um, and then he said, the third, he's going to tell him that, he said, Father, I'm, no worthy. I'm not even no longer worthy to be called your son. Uh -uh, I'm not even worthy. Mm -hmm. And the fourth thing he said, he would ask the Father to forgive him, understand him, and make him like one of his hired hands. And then his father, when his father saw him coming, it's like, wow. He ran out to meet him and hugged him. And, and he told him, and he kept trying to explain to the father what was, you know, what he, he kept that speech he had practiced. He kept trying to explain it to him. And he, his father didn't hear none of it. He was so happy to see his son back home. Mm -hmm. and, he, and he would tell him to bring all that, the robe, the grin, and the shoes. And, and you know, put him on the bed. Said, cause he, he was dead, and now he's alive. Right. He was lost, and now he's found. Mm -hmm. Now let's look a little bit at the older son. Now, the, the, many times when you hear this story, they say the older son missed the mark because they say he was jealous. He wouldn't come out. He wouldn't celebrate. Mm -hmm. But let's look at some of the pluses with the older son. The older son had been with the daddy all the time. Right. He worked with him in the field. He looked after him. He was kind of like daddy's right hand man. Mm -hmm. And I imagine many times, probably when the, uh, when the dad was being older, getting older, he may not have felt like going some days. And he probably told daddy, stay here, get you a couple more hours of rest. I got this. Mm -hmm. He knew how to run the, the, the farm. Mm -hmm. And he said, you know, you don't have to worry about it. I got this. Mm -hmm. And Dad could depend on him. He served him. He was honest and all that. And then when the son, young son, come home, nobody told the daddy that. I mean, nobody told the older brother. He's out in the field, hot, and just really tired, but he's trying to get the crops right. But nobody told him that the older boy was, the younger boy had come back. But after a hard day's work, and then he had to figure out, okay, what we're going to do tomorrow. Tomorrow we're going to go in that field. We're going to harvest this. We're going to harvest that. And uh, after he did all that, then he comes up tired, hungry, and want to just eat, take a shower, and relax. Mm -hmm. And as he gets close to the house, he hears all this music. And he said, he said, what in the world? So he saw one of the servants. He said, what's going on? Oh, your brother has come back, mm -hmm. and we have a feast. Yeah. And he said, you know that calf we had in the, in the fattening pen? We killed him. Mm -hmm. We're going to have a barbecue beef. So we get ready to have a feast. Come on, join us. He didn't. And then the father comes out and tries to talk to the son. 
said, you know, you ought to be glad your brother is back. You ought to be glad. And come on and join us. He said, no, no. And I said, oh, I, I don't want to do that. He said, well, why wouldn't you? He said, look, Dad. He says, oh, I said, all this time, all these years, I worked for you. And I, and, uh, I never disobeyed you. I followed your commands. I did all I could to help you out. Mm -hmm. But you not one time did you have a feast for me, not even for what a little goat. Mm -hmm. So but here your son that's been out wasting your money, partying and on harlots and all. Mm -hmm. He comes home and you want to give him the best. Mm -hmm. Well, the father couldn't seem to understand why the old son was not as happy as he was. But that it was a difference with the father and son than with the, the uh, two brothers. Their relationship was different. Mm -hmm. And I can imagine the older one was thinking, now, he done wasted. So when he get restless again, he gonna go off again. He gonna run off again. He could very well have felt that way. But he told his dad, he said, now, I never refused to do anything that you'd asked me for. He said, but he come around and here you are. And you see, uh, the, the older son may have felt like, you know, like you said, he finished the day work, he was coming home, coming on up to the house and ready to eat and sit down and relax. But no, they had all this music, the dancing and everything. And I can see some of the older son's action because there are days when you're working, when you get off work, get home, sometimes you don't even want to talk to nobody. That's right. <laughs> you just want to come home, you want to sit down, you want to be quiet, and you want everybody to leave you alone. <laughs> so <laughs> he's coming out of the field. He's hot. He's tired. And, and you know, probably the last time his mind was this boom, boom music stuff. <laughs> and I'm sure with all the celebration, everybody was just hollering to the top of their voice and all that stuff. And, and that's enough to throw you off. <laughs> yeah. So I'm thinking that he just wanted to get in, eat, take him a shower, and just get quiet. Because the next day, maybe 3 or 4, four o'clock, 5 o'clock in the morning, he'll go back out there again. Mm -hmm. And see, and the father didn't, couldn't seem to understand why his son was like that. But that was not, his son was not, as they say, he was not feeling it. He was not into it. And not that day, any day. But they were partying and having a good time. And, and, uh, and the father said, you know, you ought to be happy. Your brother has returned home. He's been found. But see, the older son had to work all the while the brother was gone. Mm -hmm. Didn't say how long it was. But the right the way he was living, it couldn't live so long because he wasted all his money. Mm -hmm. But uh, he could not understand that. But the father and son relationship was different from the two sons. And, and, and as we look at this, we see where um, the younger son messed up, but he got forgiveness. The older son, he felt betrayed, and the father was caught in the middle, trying to hold everything together. And, and that's, that, that is kind of hard. Mm -hmm. But, you know, sometimes as we look at now, as, as we look at the father, so... You know, the father, he didn't really understand, like I said, why the older brother was acting like he was acting. But he um, he felt like, you know, since he got his son back, it was time to celebrate. In his heart, he probably did, want, you know, felt like he should celebrate. But he didn't understand that everybody didn't, all of them didn't feel the way. His older son didn't feel the same way. It's kind of like when some people come to the Lord, in the Lord house, they come to the Lord. Everybody's not happy when you give up your give up the old life and you come and you get this new life in Christ. Everybody ain't happy for you. No, everybody's not happy for you. So uh, <clears throat> the um, the older son felt betrayed, like I've done all this. Look how I've done. I helped my father. Been there for him. I, I've been his right hand man. Let him sleep late. I go in the fields. I'll go up, get up 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock in the morning, 
and we'll start the rolling, start the farm life rolling. Mm -hmm. But yet, and he never offered, never offered him even a goat for a cup of tea. And here he killed this calf, he didn't fast. Mm -hmm. But this rascal. Mm -hmm. After he done been up, spent all the money he had, which was not his, it was his leg. Spent the inheritance and, and lived a good life. He, he rode the streets, he did anything he wanted. Now he comes back and, and he, he ready to, you know, daddy's ready to celebrate. And, and that had to hurt the older son, because I know how I would have felt. <laughs> we all can see ourselves in this. That's right. Because, and see, one of the main things about the father, and he should have, when, you, when, you, when you're faithful one child uh, at the expense of the other one, of the other ones, you start a mess. Because that stuff grows. Sometimes it starts real good stuff. But it'll grow over the years. And the next thing you know, you got a problem. Mm -hmm. Look at Jacob and his son. Look at uh, Isaac Ishmael. Mm -hmm. Joseph and his brother. Now, Joseph's daddy, just go to them. Made them a couple of men of color. I mean, and, and, and uh, he did so, so much for Joseph and so little for his other son. And they got jealous. And you see what happens. Sometimes it can lead to even murder. Mm -hmm. When sometimes you look up and people do something crazy, you say to yourself, well, what is a What in the world caused him to kill his own family? You don't really know what's going on. That thing could have come from birth. Yes. You could have stemmed from an early age. And, and see, uh, when the younger son, one thing about the younger son, though, when he came back, he knew he couldn't just come back and just get revenge. So when he said what he did, he knew he had to repent and he had, had to ask for forgiveness. Mm -hmm. He knew he couldn't just say, hmm, sorry, well, I'm sorry. No, that won't go get him. No, he had to. He know, when he spoke about sinning against heaven, he understood that his sins was went further than just his family. Mm -hmm. He had disobeyed God. That's right. He had violated the fifth amendment with honor thy mother and thy father. Mm -hmm. He knew he couldn't just, you know, slide back in there. No, he, he, because his dad apparently had brought them up as in like Proverbs 22 and 6 where it says, train up a child the way he should go. Mm -hmm. And when he's old, he's not to part from him. Well, he strayed a little while, but he realized his help coming from the Lord. Mm -hmm. And he knew that he was going to have to get it back right. He knew he could go home to his father and ask him to do it. But he also had a, a heavenly father that he knew the answer to. And he knew that too. So he knew he couldn't just go, go in there slipping and sliding and say, Ooh, sorry, pumping up your shoulder and say, I made a boo-boo. No, no, no. You messed up real bad. And so he knew that. He, so his father had taught him the things of the Lord. And, and then we, we look around and uh, uh, say, you know, when, when parents, parents need to be, uh, need to, uh, be very cautious but how they are treating their, their children. And to make sure, you know, you need to know what's going on with them at different age groups. You know, because sometimes they get this in them and they hold it. Children, grown folks and all. And it passes on from one generation to another. And it keeps going and it keeps going and it keeps going. So we have to be very careful how we do things. And that's just at your home. Well, in your church, you need to do the same thing. Be very cautious how you conduct the business. Because you start some feud and it goes on and on for generations. That old generation done died out, this may still go on. So it, you, you have to do it. You need to do that. And that will make it, you look at the community. You look at all your job, all this stuff, everybody, everywhere you turn, there's some of that going on. But you can start out with your home and be very cautious 
try to treat the children mm -hmm. and make sure that they are treated, each one of them is still treated equally. Now, there may be some times when one is in need and another is not. You, you, you work it as it comes. But then you also think about the fact now, before I, this one comes back now, if someone else has a need, you help another and help another. And, but the thing about it is be careful how you dope on one or, one or two of them. Because what you do, you'll be great. Mm -hmm. You'll be great. Treat them all right. That's right. That's right. And, and then, you know, we look at, when we look at the way this has happened. Now, the dad's got a problem. He's got, the son has been his backbone. His son has been there for him. What if the son had left home? The older son had left home. Father would have been in a mess. Mm -hmm. He would have had to get some of the servants to help him, you know. This way, he could keep it in the family. The family business could continue on. But if he had, if the older son had left, like the younger son left, father would have been gone. Mm -hmm. But in the older son, you couldn't understand, saying the only time I've been with him, I've done what I could do. I've I never disobeyed him. I tried to make his path as easy as I could. And now this is the thing that I did. So uh, <clears throat> sometimes we just got to, we got to back up and we just look at the situation. So now did I do this or did I do that? How should I do this? And, and you know, you got to talk to them. What's on your mind? What's going on? And sometimes they might tell you at an early age that what they think you're doing. And then you can address it and then you can work with it. And it's amazing how it can change. But people, sometimes they hold stuff in them for years and years. Sometimes you don't even know, you don't even know what's going on. You just assume they're all right. And they are right at a broken path. So we have to remember that because that can stem from home. Then it's in our churches and our, on our jobs and everything. So, you know, if we do, but just like this father, he rejoiced when this son came home. And we... When we stray away and come back, God rejoices when we come home. And, and you know, when you think about that, and then you look, and she's kind of like Dorothy on the Wizard of Oz. There ain't no place like home. Are there any comments? You said uh, you have more than one child, but you treat them all the same. I can just say my mom and dad treated us the same. One day. <laughs> I think I think I, I two women that I deserve for myself, but the rest of them I got because of my brother and sister. Uh -huh. Being, being the they all of the same. Y'all get in line, everybody get because you knew, you knew, you knew. Somebody get it. And sometimes they say sometimes they say when I make you good news, I know you will be that's right, I have the right one. <laughs> supposed to do, just like I try to teach Sunday school. Mm -hmm. I give it the best I got, Amen. and then it's up to God. Amen. Are there any other comments? You ain't trying. You doing what God said. <laughs> That's why I said, keep on grabbing that cat out there. <laughs> do, what, do what God tell you to do. <laughs> and, this, and this message also, it pretty much uh, lets us know the commandment. Pretty much that 
when somebody's lost, he went out there and brought them back. You know, yes. he accepted him. He went out there with love because God yes. is love. Yes. So he went out there with love again. And even with the older child having a misunderstanding, understanding that I've been here, but why are you going there and doing all those things to me? He said, son, you know, he was lost and yes. now he's found. Yes. He said, you know, so he, he came back and he showed God and everything was ended. Mm -hmm. Even with his disrespect, he said, son, I'm going to let you go out here and learn. Yeah. I'm going to let you go. Uh -huh. I'm going to give you yeah. some of my money. It wasn't even his, his inheritance at that time. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And he did that, allowed him to go out and learn that lesson, a hard lesson. Very hard. Hard yeah. lesson. Yeah. And then when he, the son got his lesson and understood, I've done wrong. Mm -hmm. the, the service eating better than me. I'm doing all this. Mm -hmm. Went out there and did all that sin. Mm -hmm. Did everything wrong. But then he repented. He mm -hmm. recognized what he did wrong for, before God, what he did wrong within mm -hmm. himself, yes. and he changed and came back and asked for forgiveness. Yes. He forgave yes. himself first because he repented. Mm -hmm. Then he asked for his father's forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And yes. so he did everything he was supposed yes. to do. Yes. He knew he couldn't just come in, like I said before. <coughs> he couldn't just come in and say, oops, sorry, Dad. Mm -hmm. No, no, it won't all involve in Dad. He had to talk to the Lord about it. Too. Because like you said, he was raised right, trained up a child. That's right. Yeah. He may stay, but he came back. Mm -hmm. And then it seems to me you got to think about the oldest poor. Mm -hmm. And uh, when the son left, if the father couldn't have a talk with the, with the oldest son, say, so, you know, now it's just you and me. I appreciate all you're doing and all this stuff. And he could have said, well, we're going to have a little appreciation dinner for you. Or something like that. Mm -hmm. But he did he probably didn't think of it. Uh, so he didn't have anything. <clears throat> but then he gets the the finest calf. Yeah. They didn't have that calf in the badminton pen. And then he get that thing. So mm -hmm. they just keep on going. Mm -hmm. Some folks say, Oh, I got to uh, I, I I want to change. That disturbs me. Mm -hmm. That that describes me. I'm gonna change. Mm -hmm. But I'm just saying for the the biggest problem we can have is communication mm -hmm. and let somebody know you know say if he had told the dad say, you know dad I, I've been helping you and I've been doing <coughs> it and, and I feel like you're just not favoring me as much you're favoring the, the young one and he ain't doing it and half the time you can't get him up get him in the field well, at the end of the year he got by the car he ain't had a driver lesson but he was going to get something to come and come at the dad bought us a cup. Bought us a cup. And you didn't even know. And, and I'll be honest with you, I got angry about it. So I didn't grab it. I didn't want it. Then I asked my dad, why did you do that? He said, you know what? I can trust you and depend on you. I can't trust that boy to depend on him to do that. But have a good time. Yeah. And he is a, I still can't trust that boy to do that. Good time. So a lot of times, and, and what we look like, man, I already love this story and I always compare it to my brother Patty. Love in a difficult time. Mm -hmm. And I don't care how difficult things may be, we gotta learn how to love each other exactly. in difficult times. We have family, friends, whoever it is, everything that God always go our way. But we still mm -hmm. gotta learn how to learn. We still have to learn how to love in difficult times. And y'all and fight talk about each other behind the back, get a gun and all that kind of stuff. No, no, no. I don't agree. If I don't agree with what you say, you know, I just say, you know, I just, I don't get it. I don't agree with what you say. Don't mean you're wrong, but I just don't agree with it. And then we go on to chapters two. Mm -hmm. The next time I see you, I'm not going to be mad because you didn't agree with what I said. Yeah. Uh-uh. You have an opinion too. Amen. And if you didn't agree with what I said, you just didn't agree. But we're going to depart being friends. Mm -hmm. We're going to depart being friends. Because mm -hmm. we got to meet again. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. So, are there anything else? Thank you so much, Sister Nancy. Was that awesome lady? Okay. Okay. This lady can't do nothing about that. <laughs> I got more work out of Ray, but <laughs> that was before my time. <laughs> Again, truly, we thank you, our trustee Wilbur, for that lesson. At this time, we'll have a response from you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, we're starting. I 
I know we don't have a two turn to ask for the kids, so this Sunday we start studying the books of the Bible, learning the books of the Bible, who wrote the books of the Bible, and today our book was Genesis. Moses wrote the book, the first five chapters, and we just learned that the books of the Bible so they'll know where to go and look for information. So Genesis was our first book, the book of law. So that Jesus we went over that this morning. Mm -hmm. Amen. At this time, we have um, a response from the uh, dark class. I think a question that this, this lesson should leave us with attendance 27, offering was $40. 